Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and this is Beginner's Guide Part 5. Now in this tutorial I want to look at using filters. Now I have sort of touched lightly on them in the earlier Beginner's Guides but I want to sort of concentrate more on them in this video. Now running along the top here we have the menus and one of those menus is filters and when you click on that you have these options here and from the first section of filters you have a sort of sub menu and you have filters within that sub menu so you have blur filters, sharpen filters, distort, noise, detect, color and the new one which is astrophotography now I freely admit I don't do astrophotography I know, know very little about it so I won't sort of delve too much into that one and there are a few sort of specialized filters below this for like frequency separation lighting shadows and highlights and haze removal now in the early con um, connotations of affinity photo the filters were all destructive and by that I mean is like destructive editing I have mentioned this before but I'll go over it again the destructive editing was that once you'd made the edit because it affects the image or the layer that you are on once you made that edit you couldn't go back and tinker with it you were sort of stuck with it and if you got it wrong you would have to sort of do the undo which is so you can do undo which is control and Z on a PC and I think command and Z on a Mac or you would have to delete sort of layers that you may have added pre uh, above that edit and you want to go back to it so what Serif did was they made some not all of the filters into what they call live filters and you can access the live filters from the layers panel and this icon down here which looks like a sort of um, what do you call it, an hourglass icon so if you click on that it will open a menu that is quite long here as I can't sort of open both that menu and this menu at the same time what I've done is I've done screen grabs of the live menu live filters menu sorry I had to do it in two halves because it's quite long and I've sort of stuck them together so I can open now the filters menu and if you look at like the blur menu uh, filters as you can see we, we've got all these ones here and then you've got a couple here minimum and maximum blur and bilateral median and custom now if you look over here pretty much these are all the blur filters in this first section on the live filters menu they're not in the same order which makes it slightly confusing but I have noted that average I think it is um, zoom blur and field blur are not live filters and by bilateral blur and medium blur are included in this list of live filters so they sort of they haven't got every blur filter listed as a live filter they may do it in some later incarnation of affinity photo but at present they are not live filters some of these blur filters now in the sharpen section there's three of them and there's three here in this the same three in the live filters uh, distort again there's not all of these are listed I mean you do have like ripple and twirl but there's definitely more in this list than there is in the live filters list and when you come to noise as you can see in the live filter list there's only four options and there's one, two, four, six, seven options in the filters menu. 
Now there do not seem to be any live filters for the detect options and the colours which would be like half tone vignette and defringe like we've got vignette defringe there half tone is somewhere down here half tone here we go and again there's m many more colours options in the filters menu that aren't in the live filters menu and finishing off hang on um, there's a few specialised ones like I said below but the only ones that have got live filters is lighting in and shadows and highlights so you don't get haze removal and f frequency separation that come as live filters so there are still some filters that will be destructive but the vast majority of them are available as live filters and will work non-destructively and when that happens when you use an option from here and let us say we use um, let me just pick one off apart top of my head we use try the Gaussian blur and when you click on that what it will do is the layer that was highlighted it will add that to and make a child layer of the live filter that you add and if you go off and make further edits you can always come back double click on the icon and open the box again and tinker with it if you've you know you think you've gone too far or not far enough so you, know, you could blur this for whatever reason that you want now pretty much Gaussian blur is probably one of the most popular blurs um, you will find it used in many sort of tutorials um, because although you are blurring the image when you change the blend mode of it it can have sort of different effects that are what many people are after in their tutorials so that is sort of how you would use the live filters um, and work non-destructively but like I said some of these filters will still have to be used from the filters menu and they will be destructive so let me delete that off of there and to show you what I mean by this let me just get this a bit further over that side one filter I know is not like a live filter and that is haze removal so if you click on this oh, get rid of that I'm oh, sorry um, this will as you can see is not added any extra layers so this is a destructive filter now <laughs> a lot of these filters and other options you will get down the bottom here free icons and the first one is like you just see the image as it stands and the middle icon if you click on that you get this line that you can move across and as you can, hopefully you can see down here this side is the before the filter was added and this side is the after the filter is added so you can tinker with your settings to see whether the effect you are having is acceptable to what you you know what you're trying to get or the third icon is you will see them side by side so hopefully you can see like this area here behind the tree with this haze removal is now much clearer it's not a much whiter and brighter and the same goes for the reflection so you know, if I was happy with that and I clicked on this in fact what I'll do is let me cancel that a second and duplicate this is why you should never really work on your original because you, you want to protect this let me just put a padlock on that and work on this layer here and come back to the filters and haze removal and then apply I'll turn off that bottom layer so that is now applied 
and if I then add in adjustment for example and let's say white balance and I wanted to make it slightly warmer or a little cooler let's make it a bit cooler now that white balance is a non-destructive edit and I can go back and alter it but I can't go back and alter the filter um, I would have to press Ctrl and Z a couple of times to get back to where I was or if you've got the original safe and protected at the bottom you'd have to sort of go back to that which is why myself and pretty much all people who make tutorials will say to you where possible work non-destructively but you know obviously in some cases especially with filters you have no choice but to work non-destructively uh, because there is no live filter option to work with um, I'm not 100% certain when the live filters were added I think it's probably version 1.7 or 1.8 um, but it is a sort of a brilliant feature to work with so if there is a filter that you want and it's available in the live filter options I would recommend using that rather than the filter option from the menu let me just delete that white balance one we don't need that now um, so I'm going to duplicate this in fact I'll press Control and J a few times we get a, f a few versions of this and we will try so a, a different filter on different layers so we've had a look at the haze removal filter um, so this top one here we'll, we'll, I'll work with the live filters first of all so like I said you've got the Gaussian blur which we have looked at and is the most commonly used pretty much all of these first few are just variations on the Gaussian blur theme except for maybe motion blur you click on that you can sort of blur the pixels in a direction so at the moment this is on zero so they're going left to right but you can move that round so the blur goes diagonally or up and down so that is pretty much how that works so let me just delete that see which is something you know you can do with live filters that you can't do with the destructive filters so and then the next blurs down here like radial blur is a bit much like the motion blur but it sort of radiates from a center point and I believe if I remember correctly you can alter where if you click somewhere else on the screen that circular point that it radiates from will vary let me delete that one and depth of field this is more of a specialized filter I mean I have done videos of this in the past but you can get the sort of tilt shift effect where you let me raise these up quite high where the center area remains unblurred and then it sort of blurs as it goes out from the center and you can then alter the distances in this and how that blurs but like I said there is that I've made videos and there are videos out there that explain this much better I'm just doing a very quick look at some of these filters um, I must admit I don't really know what the field blur is I'm guessing it might be a variation on the depth of field diffuse glow again I'm not this is having sort of weird and wacky effects on the sort of looks to me like the lighter areas of this image again it's not a filter I've used much unless it's been in a tutorial that I've been following and then I may use it but as I don't fully understand what it is doing 
I, I don't use it very much. And again, with maximum blur and minimum blur, I again, I don't use those. So coming into the sharpening tools, now there are three here, and you've got clarity, unsharp mask, and high pass. Now, I personally am a, a bigger fan of high pass, which is why I've added the high pass filter icon in my tools bar down here because I use it most often. Um, I did explain in an earlier video how you can add the filters and other tools in the tools bar because um, in the video I added the haze removal tool. Um, but basically the if we go with the unsharp mask for example you can then increase the radius and let me zoom in to this tree and hopefully you can see sort of an effect that you're having on the pixels in this image now the unsharp mask it needs to be done sort of fairly subtly because if you go too far with it you start getting halo effects around some of the items which is again why I don't use it so much and let me just move that to there get it there we go there and uh, so I don't use unsharp mask so much let me just delete that off and again the clarity is a very similar tool and I don't really use that one so much I personally use high pass like I said but with high pass you need to sort of make a duplicate of the image that you want to sharpen so this layer here would be for example my original image and this layer here would be the layer I'm going to add the high pass to so if I click on high pass and what high pass does it puts a grey sort of mid grey colour over the image and you then raise the radius and hopefully you can start to see the image coming through. If I push this up really high, as you can see, you can start to see the image. But again, you need to be quite subtle with this. You know, probably never really go much above four or five, because what this is doing is sort of, I don't know the full technicalities behind it, but roughly what you're doing is you're added, adding sort of extra pixel data to the edges the darker edges that they are being detected by this slider and that will then sort of once we change the blend mode to one of the options in here you've got overlay soft light hard light and vivid light are probably the four main ones to use those extra pixels are being added to the edges will help sort of sharpen the image so I normally use either overlay or vivid light and depending on sometimes I do use hard light and soft light so let me just put this on to vivid light close that down again I will zoom in and I will turn off this layer so that was the original and that is with the layer above with the high pass added and set to vivid light so let me zoom out again I'll bring this slightly over so and then I will just delete that and we are back to looking at the live filters now these other ones here are uh, basically they will just twist and turn the pixels in the image a certain ways 
So if we go with the ripple effect, as you move this high, you can sort of get all sorts of weird and wacky effects. And similarly, twirl will do a sort of a twist, twisting circle in the middle there, and you can go quite high and get sort of weird and wacky effects like that. So that is that one. Spherical, even I have to, oh this is one where it will sort of make this look like a, a punch out a sphere from the center so it sort of looks like it's coming towards you and you can sort of you can even go sort of concave and again you can get all sorts of different effects depending on what you want to get from that filter and hang on I forgot to delete that one there we go, delete and this place, I'm not 100% certain what this, oh this is for if you've got a, got a, like a brick wall and you want to put some wording on it and make it look like that wording has been sprayed on, um, you can use this um, filter and load sort of a displaced map that will help make it look like the wording is going in and out of the crevices of the brick wall. Um, I think I made a video about this a long time ago but there are plenty of videos out there about the displace filter and if that is the sort of look that you want to go for I would suggest that you look at one of those. I think Olivio Sakaris has made a pretty good video on the displace filter so I would advise you have a look at that. Let me delete this one. Pinch and punch. It's going to be sort of, I think, about pretty similar to the one we had earlier, where you can sort of either move in or out and sort of have concave or whatever the opposite of concave is. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'll delete that. And lens distortion I'm guessing this is going to be a, another variation on the pinch and punch theme so let me delete that one and perspective I'm guessing this is going to be the same sort of thing as the perspective tool that's found over here um, let's have a quick look Yes, I think it is. It's just going to be a variation or another version of the perspective tool that you find there. And I looked at that earlier, so I will delete that. Now this next one, Liquify, is a fairly new addition to the live filters. Because this is a sort of a shortcut way of getting to the liquify persona which you, know, you would click on here and you have all these options here to pull the pixels around to change how it looks and I must admit I've never really looked at the live filter version I click on that you see it is it takes you to the liquify and you've got the same options and you can do the same things and once you click done you have that liquify filter as a um, an option and a layer and you can always come back and re-edit if you want to which is something you, I don't think you can do so much if you've gone to the liquify persona and made alterations if you make other edits you may not be as easy to get back to alter something but with the live filter you can do so let me just delete that one and then we come to the 
taking away noise or adding noise. Now, denoise is sort of just reducing any noise that might be in your image, be it luminance noise or color noise. Um, this particular picture, I don't think it has too much noise, so it'd be very hard to tell that this is having any effect. But if you do have a fairly noisy picture, this might be the best way to go using the live filters. Now the next one is add noise. Now if you want to sort of make a picture look sort of like an old film picture and you've got this nice crisp digital picture you may want to add some noise to make it look quite old. Now I'm going to push this quite high this is something you wouldn't necessarily do but I don't know whether it happens with the live filter but with the sort of normal filters which are destructive when you click OK or finish or whatever you the amount of noise that you've punched in will reduce and quite considerably in some cases let me just click on this now see that didn't have any effect what's that set on 90 so let me delete that and I'll use the destructive version so noise add noise so that's at 88% let me put that on 90 and if I click apply the amount of noise that you can see here should lessen you see that is a lot less than it looked before I clicked apply and if that's not the look you're after because this has been added destructively you would have to sort of go control and Z to get back to the non noisy picture and maybe push this up to 95 so when you then click apply it will drop back down to where you wanted it to be so let me press control and Z to get rid of that filter so in this case in that case you know it's better to add noise with the live filter. Diffuse and dust and scratches, I'm guessing it's I'm not sure about diffuse, but dust and scratches will look for any sort of dots and scratches it thinks that are there and will remove them. Um, again, ooh, I didn't expect that to be quite so effective quite so soon. So again, this is a tool I've never used and I'm not 100% certain how and why you'd want to. Um, well, that's something you may need to, you may want to tinker with, or maybe read the help files, um, which can be found if you click on F1 or use the help option. So now we're coming down to the more sort of specialized uh, filters. Now half tone will do what it says and it will turn this into sort of like a half tone image and you can pick to have lines where you can get different half tone effects or circular again where you get a sort of rotating from the middle and next we have vignette and this will just make the edges and corners darker or lighter um, it is a rather sort of crude way of doing a vignette um, but it is it does work quite well you can like I said you can either have dark edges or you can have whiter edges so that is a way to add a vignette and the fringe I must admit I don't know what that does I'm guessing it's if you get a fringing effect around your image especially if you've maybe pushed it a bit too far with the sharpening 
this may help get rid of that fringing it's not something I can test on this particular image I don't think there's any fringing on it this next one I'm not 100% certain how you pronounce this I always struggle with this it's Vor only oh yeah vor, whatever it's called you click on that and it gives you this sort of mosaic effect and you can alter the width of the lines and the size of the circle uh, the mosaic again a sort of very specialized option you may not use very often now this next one procedural textures now this one is very good if you are good at maths and you know sort of what you are sort of talking about when it comes to math symbols which I don't but there are some presets up here so you can do swap red and green and you can then make some alterations if you know sort of the maths that to do that and then you got invert red metallic looking um, and you can sort of push some of these sliders around to get all sorts of weird effects so unless you are good at sort of knowing the maths to make certain filters because yeah, like you've got this all this maths up here is what is needed to make this particular filter I do not understand any of that so that is a very specialized thing and probably definitely not one for um, beginners to sort of start tinkering around with apart from maybe using the presets and then we come to I'm going to skip over lighting for the minute and come to shadows and highlights now this is where it gets slightly confusing because there is an adjustment called shadows and highlights so if I click on the adjustment and as you see because it's an adjustment it's put the layer above the image layer that I was on and you have two sliders where you can alter the shadows or you can alter the highlights let me delete that but if you go for the filter version you get four sliders not two so you've got shadow strength, shadow range, highlight strength, highlight range and that is the default setting there is also an option to go back to the version 1.6 settings where you get five sliders um, you get highlights, no six sliders, so you get radius of shadows and highlights added um, they obviously dropped this after version 1.6 but have kept it in available if anybody wants to edit one of their older pictures where they used the 1.6 version so I'm guessing this is possibly a subtler way of altering highlights rather than and shadows and highlights rather than the adjustment version which only has the two sliders and sort of you'd have to probably use it just a very little bit otherwise the effect will be over the top but using the filters you probably have a bit more control so let me delete that so the last live filter we're going to look at is lighting now you click on this you, it opens up this box that's got all the adjustments you put that over there for now and then you get this sort of triangular option here and you can click this and drag this node here and you can add a sort of light and effect so it's all lit up within inside the triangle but outside the triangle and getting close to the edges of the triangle it is getting darker 
you can also click on the inner lines to sort of alter how wide that beam of light will be and you can bring by clicking on this middle one you can bring it closer to the center point or you can move it further away and say for example have that moon highlighted and sort of maybe narrow the beam of light hitting the tree and not affecting the outside. Now I've, I really do not understand all of what is going on here. Invariably I only, if I ever use this filter, I only ever sort of alter like the positioning of the nodes like I'm doing at the moment now and I might alter some of the minor settings and not I don't alter too much down here I know you can sort of alter the direction from here rather than using the nodes and move this in and out and change how that looks I personally find it easier just to if I know I want the light to be coming from a certain direction I find it easier to use the nodes so like I said apart from maybe some minor diffuse and what have you shininess and specular I don't make too many alterations if and when I ever use this particular filter so let me delete that one sorry for that quite abrupt ending there um, well, I recorded this I did all the filters in one hit thinking it'd be sort of an okay video but it went on for over an hour so I thought it might be best to split it in half and do one video which looks at the live filters and the next video looking at the filters from the filters menu that aren't included in the live filters selection so I'm gonna end this video here and uh, thank you for watching and hopefully you will look at the next part thank you very much and goodbye